We're at workshop three in a series of 10 workshops for every maths teacher in the country. Today we're going to talk about problem solving, which unfortunately our students experience very little of. When our students were asked in a piece of recent research about their maths classroom, they said they don't have to think. And I think that's quite sad in a subject that should be all about critical reasoning. So we're going to talk about problem solving. We're going to talk about why it's important, how to implement it in the classroom. I'm going to get teachers solving problems. And it's hands-on material that the students and teachers will enjoy in the actual classroom itself. So research says students, this is a way for them to learn new mathematics. And particularly to see connections between mathematical topics. Do you know, at the moment it is seen as com totally compartmentalised. Here's the differentiation question. Here's the, the circle question. Never shall they meet. I think there's not just a value for, I suppose, the kids back at the school, but for ourselves as well, even to, you know, coming along here today, out of school and, you know, dealing with two teachers from my own school, you know, who have a lot of experience as well within the subject and hearing their ideas as well as, you know, my own, and coming together and, you know, talking with Gary as well, and we all kind of getting ideas from other schools as well, you know, and then bring it back into the classroom. I'm going to ask you here to analyse some questions for me. So you've got questions there from pages one to four. And you've got a box up in the top right hand corner, so you can see it on my screen here. Could you just put a tick into the box as to whether you think this question is a procedural one or a problem solving question? Our focus in the Project Maths development team is to deal with teaching and learning in the classroom. So we talk about methodologies. How can we teach maths in a better way, if you like? How can we increase understanding on behalf of the students? We're going to talk about using the locker problem in the classroom, but more importantly, implications in the classroom for a problem-solving approach. So how do you push it onto a thousand lockers then? Well, what we want to do is see is there, we're lazily going to say there's ten times as many, which there isn't. So we're going to see how many So you're just, it's just are. counting the squares up yeah, then, is it? Yeah, that's Okay. Right. Now, to push it a bit then, this is what I would give students. Extension questions. Okay. But I think teachers are aware that something needs to be done in the subject. And by and large, the response to the workshops has been fantastic. Teachers are very enthusiastic when they see the new methodologies because they're very hands-on and they've been proven to work. Because we've seen in the 24 project schools that this approach does work, does increase understanding in maths. And finally, the students are coming out of the maths classroom saying, now I know what's going on. Now I understand the subject. But actually, aren't they just the prime squares? Yeah. That was, that's, that's what you said now. Yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah, so that's perfect. Now, the, the last one then there is just designed to push people on a bit as well. Saying it had to be the one with the most, most factors. factors. Correct. Yeah. So that's your challenge then. Which numbers have the most, the most factors, factors and is there a method to find them? I'm delighted that this course is um, dealing with problem solving because um, the new Leaving Cert, when it comes out, will be dealing with problem solving and that's what kind of deterred me from problem solving before. It's because the exam was um, always just procedural exam. So um, this, this, I feel, is actually going to be going back into my class. This process is, this strategy is to act the problem out. Now, can I just say about this first? You can use it at any stage. You can use it like I'm doing at the end of the problem to back up while the squares are open. I might also use this in classroom if I feel it's not quite going the way I want it to. If I feel like they can't get the sample space right for the first 10 lockers. So I'll do this. So here we go. Student one, what do they do? Open the lockers, so you turn them all around. Student two goes to every second locker and closes it. Third student, every third locker changes. So I have to say my biggest challenge at the moment is that my, especially my fourth year, say my leaving cert, they would be saying like, why are we using it? What would you use this in the real world for? Um, what is the practical use of this? Um, I'm never going to look at this again the minute I leave school. So this can be addressed now by doing this type of um, maths, which is great. Judging from the teachers who have attended the workshops, if you read the end of their review, the the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. I think at the heart of mathematics is to create problem solvers. And now more than ever in this country, we need to create problem solvers. Competitor countries would produce graduates who have a greater hunger for problem solving. So this is what Project Maths is trying to, to increase, if you like, students who engage with the, with the subject and can see the benefits of applying it out there, that it's not seen as a dry subject, it's not seen as a robotic collection of procedures, it's seen as something that's alive and driven by the problems. Mm -hmm.